Hey there and welcome to How To Videos with Dr. Amy Gates. Welcome back to our series of videos about how to use the data from Google Forms to do statistical analysis in Excel on your own computer. This is the fourth video in that series. In the last video we looked at how to run an independent samples t-test and to analyze the results. In the last video we looked at whether there was a significant difference between our genders and final exam scores. In this video, we're going to focus on the paired data t-test. So paired data is sometimes thought of as correlated data or more simply before and after data. So each one of the persons that filled out my form online and created this data for me told me how they felt at the beginning of class and the possible values were between one and five. One meant they felt terrible, and five meant they felt great. That same person also tells me how they felt or feel at the end of class. And again, the higher the value, the better they feel. So this is actually paired data because each member who fills out the survey gives me an answer for both of these values. So this value is considered a pair or a set. So to see if the feeling at the beginning of class is significantly different than the feelings at the end of class, I would run a paired data t-test. So in order to do that, I'm going to go ahead and grab this information. I'm going to copy it from this location in my data and just put it elsewhere in the same Excel spreadsheet or on a new sheet if you prefer. I'm going to click Control C because I just want to copy it. I don't want to remove it or anything. And I'm going to scroll down until I have a blank area, click anywhere, and hit Control V. And now this puts the information in kind of a new space so that I can do some work in this area without affecting my other data. To run a t-test in Excel is very straightforward, and you have two choices. One is the fast choice, where if you click on any blank cell and put in an equal sign, if you know that you're running a t-test, for example, and you type in the letter T, Excel will automatically drop down all the goodies that start with a T that you can choose from. And we would want to choose the t-test. If I double click that, it'll start the process and it'll remind me that I need to put the first array or column of data here, the second array. I need to choose how many tails I want this test to be, which is a one-tailed or a two-tailed and then the type of t-test. In this case, it'll be a paired data t-test rather than, say, an independent samples t-test. So there are different ones. So let's do it this way first, and then we'll do it the other way as well. So, okay, I'm ready for my first array. I'm going to use my mouse and just highlight all of the data, not the word feeling start, because we don't want to include that. Here's all the data that the students gave me for how they felt in the beginning of class. I'm going to have to type in a comma. And when I do that, it automatically moves on to the next location where it asks me for the next array. So there's that comma there. Again, I'm going to use my mouse to highlight all the data for the next array, which is how my students felt at the end of class. Again, I'm going to type in a comma. And then what's nice is Excel reminds me. It says, OK, what kind of test is this a one-tailed or a two-tailed? I'm kind of a two-tailed fan myself, but everybody's different. So you can run a one-tailed or a two-tailed. It's up to you. So I'm going to type a two in here to choose a two-tailed test and then put another comma. And I want option one here because this is a paired data t-test rather than one of the other types. So I'll type in the one, type in the end parenthesis, and press enter. And this is the result, or the p-value, of this paired data t-test. To determine whether this test came out significant or not, we want to compare our p-value to our alpha value. If our p-value is less than our selected alpha value, we have a significant result, meaning that my two populations are significantly different, and that students did feel a lot worse in the beginning of class than they did at the end of class, which is great news. 
Most people choose an alpha value of 0.05, it's the most common, but again you can choose a stricter alpha value which would be smaller or a more lenient alpha value which would be larger. Our p-value here is tiny. This is basically rounding to zero because you'll notice that this is 1.78 to the minus 14 power, which is essentially zero. So the result we have here is that our p-value is zero, zero is much less than 0.05, and so we have a significant result. We can say that the feelings of students in the beginning of class were significantly different than the feelings of students at the end of class. And so this is an example of how to run an, an, a, a paired data, sorry, not independent, a paired data t-test in Excel. For the next video, we are going to look at correlation and scatter plots. So thank you for joining me.